So sometimes videos come together for me really quickly and sometimes I, when I put down my notes and I kind of leave them behind and I forget about them and then I remember that I haven't done those videos such as today focusing on fragrances that are primers, boosters, and enhancers and I thought since this is kind of a themed week, musks on Saturday, musk deer on Sunday, yesterday I did a video on bed scents which also featured musks, I thought Better to do this video today on primers, boosters, and enhancers, fragrances that you can use for this specific reason. So today, I've got multiple different fragrances that I think are perfect as primers, boosters, and enhancers for fragrances that you're wearing. So if you wanna find out what they are, then please stay tuned. Thanks so much for tuning in to the Sebastian Wood Smelling Great Fragrance Reviews. Some time ago when I was on another channel, I spoke highly about this particular fragrance here. Canvas and Concrete Fragrance Primer. This is it right here. I still have mine. A little bit I used quite a, a back then, but I kind of got tired of it. Then I figured out layering and things like that, and then, the, um, you know, I left it behind. It's now kind of become a collector's item. I don't think they're still selling this one. I, at one point, I know Lucky Scent was selling it. And uh, I think it was kind of part popular. It kind of enhanced your fragrance, but more of a booster rather than uh, an enhancer or maybe a primer because it basically kind of extended the life of your fragrance. Now, brands are actually releasing certain kind of uh, fragrances that you enhance their own fragrances, which you can also use for other fragrances. And then also we have the Eccentric Molecules collection and a few other fragrances that I think are perfect to enhance enhance or boost your fragrances that you're wearing. So we're going to let you know all those uh, fragrances, but I, before I get to the fragrances, if this is your first time tuning into the channel and you still haven't subscribed to the channel, please do click the subscribe button below and also click the bell so that you'll be notified for future videos and giveaways. And who out there uses fragrance primers or boosters or enhancers? Um, now, some time ago, there was two fragrances from Maison Margiela they had one called Blur, and they had another one. They got discontinued, but I, I know those were actually kind of similar in theme. But today, we're going to start off with the first one from a house called Hermetica. This is Source One. So, I like this one a lot, and I'm starting off with it because Hermetica's fragrances are meant to be, you know, rubbed. Like, you can spray it on like this, and it's a little oily, and you can do this and you can spray a fragrance on top because it's got like kind of a lotion-y kind of a technology that they've created. So what I like about this one, Source One, it's a woody citrus combo and you basically have some woods, amber, and some bergamot. I think it's made mostly for Hermetica's fragrances, but I don't mind using it with other fragrances. So it has bergamot, right? I can put this down on my skin and add any citrusy fragrances on top of it that are mostly about citruses, very kind of light fragrances. So it'll kind of like complement and, you know, enhance the fragrance and have a kind of a unique characteristic, change it up a little bit. Sort of like layering, but more like, you know, changing the smell up a little bit, like a remix of a song or a remake of a movie kind of, you know? That's what these uh, enhancers and primers and boosters are for. And I love the way this one smells. And the thing is, you can actually wear it on its own because it's simplistic. It has some intensity to it from the different notes, but it's not an overwhelming fragrance. It's mostly as a enhancer, uh, but I think it's totally wearable as it is because it smells great. The woods and the amber and the bergamot together is perfect. And I think this brand, Hermetica, I don't know if it's really caught on. I have a video on one of their fragrances, but I think one of the fragrances I really like from Hermetica is their Source One. It just smells great on its own. And I like that whole softening skin, kind of lotion-y kind of, uh, not lotion, but it's kind of a special kind of oil. And uh, it smells great on its own, and I like to wear it. It can be used as a bed scent as well. It's kind of very soft. It's subtle, as I said. And that bright citrus with the woods and the amber together is pretty darn good. So use it to enhance like something with citruses. You can enhance more woods or something ambery because you look at the notes and see what's there as a note and what fragrance you're trying to uh, you know enhance or boost 
uh, and so you can kind of like go from there. Don't make a clash, like it might clash with some notes, but you know, testing them out is a kind of a fun anyway to see what you can do with it. But this is one I recommend, uh, Hermetica Source One. Uh, I really love the way it smells. And the next one as well, I really love it as a, a fragrance on its own. Diaz Durga, I don't know what. A uh, fragrance on its own, but also as an enhancer uh, as well. And this is actually a fragrance enhancer. That's what they call it. And so enhancer meaning you're going to enhance a fragrance. So I wouldn't use it just for their own fragrances. I would buy it for other fragrances that you own as well. But for this one, they, it's a uh, cornucopia of... Uh, Synthetic notes like ISOE Super and uh, Civitone and Ambrox, but they also have some um, bergamot thrown in and there is also vetiver acetate. So I think it smells great. Really, really smells great on its own. It's pretty, pretty sexy. Kind of in the ballpark of something like uh, another 13, which I don't have with me today, which you can also use as sort of like an enhancer or primer. But this is, you know, sort of in that direction. But the thing with this one was when it first launched, it was at Barney's here in San Francisco and with our cool weather here in uh, San Francisco. I didn't think twice about it, but I was visiting Los Angeles and I went to Scent Bar in the DTLA. They had this there and I put some on and because it was hot and humid, this fragrance came alive and on its own to me, it smells fantastic. But whenever you want to enhance something that's woody, citrusy. I think this would work great. Both of these smell really, really great. And if I was going to enhance fragrances, I would spray these down first and then spray the weaker fragrance on top or a fragrance that's going to need enhancing. So that's what I would do, such as this. Uh, this is how it was done with this. It was a primer that you would spray on top, let it dry, and then you would spray the fragrance on top because it has this film on under it so it will make the fragrance last longer. So that's what I would use these for totally because it will really do that and I think it's great. But again, on their own, I think they smell great as well. And some of you don't like too much heavy fragrance. These on their own, I think, smell fantastic. By themselves if you're uh, kind of sensitive or you want some light fragrance but you don't want something that's way overwhelming so both of these I recommend this one on its own and then also this one on its own both great scents now the next one I'm going to talk to you about is from the house of uh, Jeroboam it's called Origino and this is sort of similar like uh, these two that I uh, just spoke to you about, but a little more complex. This is more of a woody aromatic fragrance, whereas the previous ones were woody. Ar All of them have been woody so far with some citruses and some aromatic touches. This one's more of a woody aromatic, not, not much citrus for me. In this one, there's some light traces of it. And for me, origino, the, the root word is origin, the original. So basically, what you smell in here exists in all of their other fragrances from Jeroboam and basically this is their musk so it's the original musk and it's kind of like the DNA of the series whereas this is in the other fragrances plus other notes to make a fragrance if that makes sense but on its own you could use it to boost up the other fragrances or any other fragrances with this one juniper is pretty prominent here spices and sandalwood so anything that has um, those notes but i could also lay this down and also use uh, um, you know other woods to enhance on top so if i want uh something like a sandalwood uh, would work anything with juniper musks citruses would work great because it also has the bergamot so anything that's light for you and you don't mind kind of like remixing the smell and then enhancing it i would use it but i think most of the time when these brands make these things it's for their own collection of fragrances but i wouldn't mind you know you know sharing and not sharing but you know testing it out with other fragrances because in the end when you're layering fragrances from two different houses houses it's fine so you can totally do it with these houses as well but this one on its own again it smells great it's a woody spicy fragrance there's a lot of woods in here um, there's lots of musk in, in here as well and this is basically as i said their musk it's their 
base, their DNA, which runs across all of the other fragrances. But on its own, it's a great fragrance to wear. You can use it to enhance other fragrances or boost them up as well. So that is Jeroboam's Origino. Next, there are three fragrances from the House of Initio Parfums. Magnetic Blend 1. There's also Magnetic Blend 7. And then finally, Magnetic Blend 8. Eight. So what's the deal with these fragrances? Once again, they're intended to be boosting up other fragrances in their collection, but you can totally use it for anything in your collection. The first one focuses on ambergris. So I've always thought that this smells authentic, but in the end, I think it is a synthetic recreation of ambergris. It's not real, but it is quite animalic. So when you want something, like this particular one, I think if you want to make your amber fragrances a little slightly an animalic, I think ambergris and ambers work wonderfully together. Um, you can lay this down and then spray your amber on top. Any of these fragrances I've spoken about today, you have to test them out to see the ratio. Do you do two sprays of one and one of the other? These are a little on the faint side, so probably you would do more of this and less of the more intense fragrance. But with this one, vanilla I think would be great on it. Uh, any kind of ambers, as I said, resins would work great. Even woods uh, and uh, citruses would work great as well. Aromatic notes, just if you want a little bit of a ambergris animalic touch, I think it would work great. So that is blend one, magnetic blend one. The second one is my favorite of the blends. Magnetic Blend 7. I don't know why they skipped the numbers, but you had Magnetic Blend 1 for Ambergris, Magnetic Blend 7 for Musk, and then the, that last one, 8, is all about woodsy um, incense and resins. But the Musk is really, really sexy. I've actually featured it in the Musk Fragrances video over the weekend, and if you want some Musk added to a fragrance, I think it's a perfect um, fragrance. It's a subtle uh, experience. This one, to me, is an overwhelming experience because it is ambergris and animalic, but this one actually, to me, is subtle. So this one you might have to, you know, definitely test your ratio of how many sprays of one or the other. But if you want a little musk added to a fragrance, I think it's um, a great uh, way to, you know, do this uh, enhancing thing and add some musk in the base and then spray something on top. Like you can add some woods on top or even something like an uh, amber fragrance to enhance the muskiness of the fragrance. I think it works great. But on its own, I find it to be very, very sexy and cozy as well. I mean, uh, you might be paying, you know, top dollar for some something that's kind of subtle, but as an enhancing tool, I think it's a perfect uh, kind of a tool. You just have to see what works for you. I think citruses will, will work great for this one as well. Anything that you think musk would be perfect. Florals, definitely. I think florals totally work great with musks. You can spray the musk, uh, this uh, num number seven, before and then you can spray some florals on top so you can have a floral like a woody floral musk type of a situation so that is a great one number seven magnetic blend number seven finally magnetic blend number eight i'm not saying it's my least favorite i just think it seems a little complex and i never personally think of resins and frankincense to enhance other notes so this one kind of seems like the odd man out between the two other ones but you can find some uh, scenarios i'm sure uh, i think you can add them to ambers because after all frankincense is a resin ambers usually are made with resins so i think it'll make them smokier and things like that or you can add them to aromatic notes to give them a kind of a frankincense smoky touch but in the end i think this one seems a little more challenging to kind of come up with scenarios of notes. I'm assuming you can add it to citruses as well, but I've never really found a citrus citrus incense fragrance. I don't know if you guys have a have one that you like, but this one I think is the most challenging out of the magnetic blends um, fragrances from Initio Parfums, just because the way it smells is a little more complex. Either way, though, on its own, it's pretty darn good. It's musk 
and frankincense. So it's a musky frankincense, so incense-y, churchy kind of a smell with musk in there. So that's Magnetic Blend 8. So I spoke about the enhancing uh, fragrances from different brands or houses. Next, I'm going to speak to you about Juliet Has a Gun's Not a Perfume and Not a Perfume Superdose. Both of them can be used to enhance, to boost, to use as a primer for fragrances, because in the end, they're minimalistic fragrances and they kind of blend nicely with someone's chemistry. And with these ones, the original being the lighter one, the super dose being re really, really intense, people say they can't smell this, and I can see that, but you can smell it. Just keep smelling it and your nose will start finally picking it up. But this one actually, right off the bat, you can smell. It's really, really strong. It's an intensify, intensified version of this. But they're using a note called Cetalox, proprietary to a company, which is basically similar to Ambroxan. So this is all about Ambroxan. On their own, I think they're great uh, fragrances to create a, you know, your own original musk with your own body chemistry. But if you want to add kind of like an ambery, woody, musky, uh, touch to a fragrance, especially citruses because they're so light, you can definitely spray these on and then um, spray the citruses on top. Or you can do it with ambers, you can do it with floral t notes, whatever you want to do it with. Ext uh, the only thing you need to keep track of is this one totally smells, so you might have to spray less of this because it might, you know, uh, interrupt, not interrupt, but kind of like interfere with your scent. But when you do it with the original, which is very light, I think it might work great. But I think you can try either of them. With this one, I think you can try more stronger scents to boost it up, uh, to enhance it. Just spray it on top. And then if you add something intense, like an amber that's really heavy, uh, it kind of like, you know, complements it and enhances it and then boosts it up, you know, because in the end, Cetalox Ambroxan has a very ambery, musky, woody structure or smell to it. So I think if you add it to ambers, I think it would be great or any other kind of like intense uh, fragrances. So I recommend these two. In fact, uh, this is really, really great to wear on its own. It's a very, very minimalistic fragrance. And some people like these kind of minimalistic fragrances, especially my sister. I gave her a bottle of this. She says she loves it because she's not the biggest perfume fan, especially since she's also an RN and she doesn't really wear uh, fragrances, but she did seem to like this one. So if you like the minimalistic musky uh, skin scents, definitely try it or just try it as an enhancer for your fragrance, both of these. The last set of fragrances I'm going to speak to you guys about are the eccentric molecules fragrances, which are basically meant to be worn on their own as min minimalistic fragrances. But out of the five, two of them have a pretty intense smell. One of them is some Somewhat intense and the, the the first two fragrances that came out in the series are not so intense which uh, a lot of people say they're blind to the smell and again uh, I'm not I don't have a bottle of another 13 here with me today that's another fragrance we can use as an enhancer uh, it has the apple apple note the citruses and the ambroxin so perfect fragrance to uh, use as an enhancer but the first one with the eccentric molecules is molecule one and molecule one is that isoe super note minimalistic note smelling of cedar and sandalwood more cedar but i think there's some touches of sandalwood in there it's a great great layering tool or to wear on its own i think this one has a cult following huge huge following with this one and you can spray it on wear it on its own if you're not not an osmic to it because I was an osmic to it at one point. But train your nose, start smelling it, and uh, you'll eventually smell the woodiness of this. I smell this on people all over the place, and ISOE Super is used so widely in fragrances. Lots of it. And again, it's that cedar sandalwood kind of combo, more cedar. Uh, but, you know, lay this down, spray it on, and then let it dry, and then spray some, um, like, citruses on top or other woods or some aromatic notes and see how they are. I think it's a great layering tool. I think you can make some great uh, combinations with this one if you like that whole cedar sandalwood uh, combo. But I've turned this one on to a lot of friends who don't like a lot of fragrance, and they've fallen in love with it and just, you, you know, wear it on its own over and over again. So that's Eccentric Molecules 1. And Eccentric Molecules 2 is the Ambroxan one, similar to Juliet Has a Gun's Not a Perfume, which is Cetalox and 
I am Broxen. Both of them are, uh, you know, proprietary to two, di two different country, uh, com not countries, two different companies, but similar kind of uh, idea. And this one again, it's woody, ambergris, musk combo, ambergris, uh, which basically slightly ambery. Uh, it does get powdery on me as well. And I think it's a great layering tool, but just to wear on its own as well. You know, you can wear it on its own minimalistically and it blends in your uh, chemistry to kind of, you know, come up with its own unique smell but once again this one you can be anosmic to it as well i think out of all of them this is the least i can smell as a smell i can totally smell this one this one has the least smell the um, uh, the ambroxan eccentric molecules too molecule two but you can use it once again to mix it with woods amber uh, you know anything ambery florals or musks and things like that i think it would be a great enhancer booster you know, primer or whatever you want to call it. So that's Molecule 2. The third one I think is pretty intense in its smell. Um, I think it, it, it's a perfume on its own and it uses vetiviral acetate, which, uh, or vetiver acetate, which was uh, in this fragrance, obviously. So they, they used it in here. Uh, but this is a vetiver smell, basically, synthetic. Um, it's grassy, earthy, woody, vetiver smell. So as I said, it's intense on its own. It's a f perfume on its own. So you might have to kind of like, uh, you know, do a little more testing to see what it works well with. Because for me, as I said, it smells like a finished perfume. Lots of vetiver. You can probably use it to a light vetiver fragrance to enhance it. Maybe, or if you think of a citrus vetiver combo, you might do it where the citruses are a little more potent than this fragrance. And then it'll kind of like balance it out because if you put some light citruses with this one, this one's going to wash the citruses out. So you have to have a nice, uh, you know, uh, a little experience to figure out what works best, almost like cooking, you know, recipes, just think what's going to work with one another. Um, so you got to have a, a little bit of experience with some notes and thinking what would complement one another. But I think to enhance other vetivers, to combine it with something intense as a citrus, I could think this one might work with something like Aqua Viva or Ora Adrian from uh, Anicutal, which the it's a very strong lemony scent, so it might complement the, the fragrance and not you know, wash the uh, lemony fragrance out too much. So that's what I would do with this one. Um, and unfortunately, this is my not my least favorite out of the eccentric molecules because it's a finished fragrance and I have favorite vetiver fragrances. So this might not be something that I'm gravitating towards too much. Either way, that's molecule three. The fourth one in the series is called molecule four, obviously, uh, and it focuses on the synthetic note of Javanol, which is a very creamy, woody, milky sandalwood. Sandalwood is very expensive, so they have one here. And to me, even though it's synthetic, uh, it smells really, really delicious. It's like a very, very cozy, creamy, woody fragrance. As I said, it smells smells milky and it's a sandalwood and this one to me um, I think is my um, it's the third most smelling uh, out of the molecules uh, it smells quite uh, strong but with this one once again I was anosmic to it at first but now I can totally pick it up it's just you, your nose is not familiar with these molecules and you can't smell them basically what that's the issue but I, I love this. The trail it leaves behind is also great because at one point, as I said, I wasn't smelling it. Now I can even smell my own trail. It's fantastic. But I love that whole creamy sandalwood thing. And with this one, you can mix it with vanilla. Or if you want a citrus that you think would complement, like an orange would go great with this. I think orange, not lemon so much, but orange, mandarin orange, I think would be great. Vanilla would be great, I think, because it's got that milky gooiness. I think you can do great things with this one as an enhancer or a booster. Uh, of a fragrance. Lots of lots of um, possibilities with this one, although you can wear it on its own as well if you like that whole minimalistic, uh, you know, creamy sandalwood uh, experience. That is Molecule 4. Last but not least, it's Molecule 5, and I've heard negative things about this one. This one focuses on cashmere. Uh, this one seems very really strong not as strong as the vetiver as a smell, but kind of strong. For me this one smells like earth, mushrooms, musk, woods, 
amber all rolled into one. It's very, very earthy. Just imagine when you pick up, um, open up a, a container of mushrooms and you can smell it. It reminds me of mushrooms. I don't know why. I have no idea why. But cashmere is very, very popular in uh, fragrances. It's used a lot. Uh, it's used as a base note. A lot of these fragrances are base notes uh, in the mall. Well, I think all of them are used as base notes for, from eccentric molecules. But this one might be a little challenging uh, to uh, combine with other notes because it is so strong as a smell. Uh, and uh, you might have to kind of like, um, you know, test out the ratio because one of this might require three or four of another fragrance because it is so strong and you got to find the right combo to mix this with i think this would mix great with like green notes you know you know we're dealing with like woody ambery musky earthy smell so adding something green and pungent as a green smell green uh, leaves uh, green ivy anything like that i think would be perfect for this but you can also do it with any musks or amber and things like that as well flowers perhaps there are some flowers that can smell like earth mushrooms and things like that so you should test it out but i think as i said the ratio of this one will be much less than the ratio of uh, what you're putting on top but always put these kind of fragrances as a base note spray it first you can let it dry or you can you know just before it's like completely dry you can spray it and it'll en enhance your fragrance and of course boost it up but those are my thoughts today on these fragrance primers fragrance boosters fragrance enhancers do you guys do these kind of tricks with the, this particular fragrances or do you just you know layer whatever fragrance you find because layering is totally fine i think the first time i heard about layering was at the joe malone counter way back in the early 2000s uh, a lot of the ladies there would tell me oh buy two you can layer them kind of thing you know they were trying to make a sale but i think these are perfect layering tools but also they're perfect as enhancers boosters and primers as i said please let me know if there are any other primers boosters and enhancers out there in the world there might be a few others that i know of i'm forgetting but these are what I own currently and I wanted to get this video out there for you guys kind of in line with the whole musk thing that we're talking about within the last couple of days let me know what are the other fragrances that are used as primers of course as I said Maison Margiela had two I think it was one of them was uh, blur and one of them was gloss I just remember the name they're both discontinued now but I think those were perfect primers or boosters or enhancers but there might be more out there in the world that I'd like to find out about put a comment down uh, so I can find out but other than that that guys let me know if you use these fragrances that i have as primers boosters or enhancers or if you've never thought about doing that i'd like to find out either way i appreciate you tuning in today to watch this video if you have any questions or comments please list below otherwise please like this video please share it follow me on facebook twitter and instagram and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye